Hello everyone, it's Attacker Simba 2 here, and for today. Now, for those who may not know me as well, I kind of want to let you know that Kingdom Hearts is one of my most favorite RPGs to ever exist, next to games like Fire Emblem and Xenoblade Chronicles. Kingdom Hearts is a series that will hold a special place in my heart, from the emotional moments, the characters, and even though the story can be very convoluted and an absolute mess sometimes, I can't help but appreciate everything that Kingdom Hearts has given given me throughout my entire life, and it's great to see a lot of things in a nice take when it comes to Disney and RPGs all together, and really, Kingdom Hearts is just such a great series. But here's just one problem I had with it. Now, I don't have a problem with the games in general, it's from what I had when it came to the Switch version, or should I put quotes on the Switch, because if you don't know, about a year ago, Square Enix and Nintendo has released Kingdom Hearts on the Switch, and to this day, I am still very salty about that, and not because of, you know, it being on the Switch, no, it's because they are cloud versions, cloud versions to be exact. This was announced during October of 2021 when Sora was announced for Smash Brothers. It was a, it was such an exciting time. I mean, after all, Sora coming to Smash Brothers, that was a great thing. So in order to add that excitement, they decided to add Kingdom Hearts on the Nintendo Switch with all three games, including, you know, 1.5 and 2.5 Remix HD, Remind in the cloud version with the third game, and also 2.8 Final Chapter Prologue, just all those things, really. But my biggest problem was having to mention cloud versions. Now, if you don't know what cloud versions are exactly, this is kind of specifically for the Switch. It's basically a game that you can run, that you can play, but it can only be run on the internet. Like, just, you have to have really great internet in order for the games to run. And these are, these are for games that are specifically from, I don't know, high quality and, you know, high definition game titles and consoles like the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One to be exact. Kingdom Hearts is a game that just doesn't make sense to be cloud versions, and to this day, I still have 1.5 and 2.5 Remix HD, and I still have it in my collection, but I have, I have not touched it in a while, because, and you might be wondering why I brought this to begin with, despite it being, despite it, you know, being a whole cloud version, well, for all we know, Nintendo could possibly shut down the Switch's eShop in the next seven years, like they did with the Wii U and 3DS one, so might as well get it before it closes forever, but, Still, why exactly am I really salty about something that came out a year ago, and why didn't I move on from it? Well, I obviously did move on from it, but there is still a little bit of, you know, kind of tendency I have with this from the fact that Square Enix tends to be very mixed at times. Sometimes Square Enix is really weird in terms of their decision. They make some incredible games, but sometimes they make some really terrible and sometimes odd decisions. Like, why exactly would you put Kingdom Hearts on the Switch as a cloud? port, but yet you have Kingdom Hearts Melody of Memories, a game that came out before the cloud versions, as a full-on game. And we gotta remember, Kingdom Hearts 1 and then Kingdom Hearts 2, two of the most beloved games, they both run on PlayStation 2. So why exactly is a PlayStation 2 game running on a cloud version? And that can go the same thing with Dream Drop Distance. That game was not just for the PlayStation 4, but that also came out for the 3DS. I still have a copy of it, believe it or not. I still have a 3DS copy of Dream, of Dream Drop Distance, and even to this day, it still runs well than what the cloud version has to give us, and it just doesn't make sense to me at all when there are so many other games, even upcoming and recent ones, that runs on the Switch very, very well. And you know, let's kind of go through them while we're at it. First of all, Mortal Kombat 11, a game that I can recall that runs on 20 gigabytes for the PlayStation 4, and it runs very, very well. Well, in the Switch, yeah, the frames and, you know, quality has dropped, but at least it runs well. The uh, Assassin's Creed, the Ezio Collection, a trilogy of, you know, the entire, of one of the most classic Assassin's Creed games, is on the Switch, and it runs very well. It just came out last year, so what, it gi so what gives exactly? The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt, in its complete edition, is entirely third over 30 gigabytes. This is one of the few examples of a game that runs very well on the Switch, even though it has very high gigabyte storage. Doom Eternal, Doom 2016, and then Doom Eternal. Yes, their game, the game's gameplay is pretty choppy and their quality isn't great, but hey, another example of a game that runs well. 
Grand Theft Auto, the trilogy. Yeah, I know, these are pretty old games, and it is a trilogy, and from what I've heard from its release, it definitely had a bit of some different feedback and reviews in terms of how it runs, but still, it somehow manages to be on the Switch. Then, another a game which definitely kind of sets the stone of how Square Enix treats their own games as sort of, you know, ports, with Near Autonoma, the end of Yorha edition, which is a game that came out last year, and this is a game that was also made made by not just Platinum Games, but is also published by Square Enix. Uh, Platinum, a Square Enix, Enix published game is on the Switch, and yet it somehow runs very well. Then, also last year, Persona 3 Portable, Persona 4 Golden, and Persona 5 Royal, games that came out on PlayStation 4, with a couple of them, you know, being a, a big remake, is also on the Switch, and they run over 10 gigabytes to be exact. And then we can't forget about the upcoming games as well. And those are still, you know, games that can run very well on the Switch. We've seen a few gameplay footage, and even though they haven't really, you know, shown any more gameplay of it, you still, there isn't, they aren't even cloud versions. Batman Arkham Trilogy, a game that isn't a cloud version, but yet still runs on the Switch. Then there's Mortal Kombat 1, a game that will run on the Switch for 39 gigabytes. A $70 game is somehow managed to run 40 gigabytes for Mortal Kombat 1 to be exact. Then there's upcoming for Metal Gear Solid Volume 1 Master Collection, which features the trilogy of Metal Gear games. And if you remember, these games download you know, and its content along with the bonus stuff are like over 20 gigabytes high. And that's not even a joke, but yeah, they still got on the Switch without any cloud. And then the recent one, Red Dead Redemption 1. Not Red Dead Redemption 2, the first one that came out on PlayStation 3 and Xbox One. So why are all of these games I've shown as an example somehow managed to be on the Switch without any cloud version? I get it. Sometimes storage is a bit minimal and you don't want your game to overrun it. But you really can't expect me to think why exactly does this game somehow manage to run and what the Kingdom Hearts, the entire collection, somehow isn't able to. Now, I can kind of get why. There are some games that are on cloud that I can accept. Resident Evil 3 like in Resident Evil 8 Village along with Guardians of the Galaxy as well those games I can understand why they can run a class version especially with Resident Evil 3 and you know Resident Evil 8 those games have very high quality the remake from what I've seen in gameplay footage they don't it looks pretty terrible in quality but yeah it actually controls pretty well I did test the demo out and Resident Evil 8 I mean come on that is a whole demo that I feel like people I mean this is a whole game that runs on not just place that just runs on PlayStation 5. I don't even want to know how Resident Evil 4 Remake is able to run in the future when it gets a cloud version on the Switch. I can understand why these games are cloud versions, but then you also get another part, the Final Fantasy 7 game, which came out on PlayStation 3 in 1997, and then the entire six Final Fantasy games, they all run on the Switch as well. So, I just genuinely don't get it. Sometimes it's Square Enix's double, double standards that I genuinely don't get. Now, from what I've heard from last year, many have kind of claimed this to reason why Square made Kingdom Hearts, the entire collection, a whole cloud version, is really because they tried to be in line with the upcoming 20th anniversary for Kingdom Hearts, which I guess, I guess I can see why, where they're coming from, but if that's the case, then that's just kind of an example of Square Enix just being in rush in order to be in line with the anniversary. I can get why you try to get, you know, try to get into the deadline and all, but was it worth making Kingdom Kingdom Hearts, you know, a whole collection to be, you know, you know, games that ran on PlayStation 2 and PlayStation 3 games to be cloud version. I mean, you got to remember, Melody of Memories manages to get a Switch version, yet the first two wasn't able to. And not just that, the entire collection runs very well on PlayStation 4. And even though, and I did hear that Square Enix didn't really want Kingdom Hearts 3 to be on the Switch because it could run on 30 gigabytes. But then again, some of the examples I've shown here, they can run pretty pretty well, even though they are very over storage in terms of what they have. So, I don't see Kingdom Hearts 3 being an absolute issue. Yeah, the frame quality might drop, but at least as long as it runs well, it at least 
is still better at, than, you know, it being cloud versions. We gotta remember, the Nintendo Switch is not all powerful. We have to remember that the Switch may run games very well, but there are times where the Switch cannot be powerful for some things. But genuinely, Kingdom Hearts as a series, one of my favorite RPGs next to Fire Emblem and Xenoblade Chronicles, it doesn't deserve this treatment. And I just kind of hope in the future Square Enix might learn their lesson and to not either rush things or try to find a way to make these games somewhat playable without resorting to cloud. If anything, that just kind of makes them kind of a waste. And last I mentioned, I brought the 1.5 and 2.5 last year, for those who don't remember, because for all I know, they could they could close the shop in the future, but then again, online could basically be destroyed if they, you know, if they shut down online, then these games are basically unplayable, and that's just a shame, but still, we gotta live with what we can. It's all, the damage has already been done, but I kind of hope Square might at least learn their lesson in the future, but let me know your thoughts and opinions down below about this. What do y'all think of this sort of salty rant I I have when it comes to Kingdom Hearts being cloud version? I don't usually do rants and all, but this is something that I'm still kind of a little bit angry about, even though it has been over a year since its release and a couple years since its announcement. But I just got to let some steam off. This is something I've had in my mind for at least a few months, and I just kind of want to get it off my chest. But let me know your thoughts and opinions about down below about this and so with that leave a like comment subscribe hit the notification bell for more videos follow my twitter and i'll see you guys next time and remember this once a legend always a legend